Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Real Talk podcast where transparency brings transformation. I am your host, Zaina, and today, y'all, I'm going to take a break of exposing myself, and we're about to get into this good word that the Lord had blessed me with that I can now bless y'all with. And it's not, you know, anything super deep, super crazy, um, not correcting you in any way, but just something that God opened my eyes to. And when I began to study it, my mind was blown, y'all. He made something so simple become so profound. And, you know, sometimes I think that we always read the Bible and just skim over it. We're literally just reading it like it's the textbook for middle school, right? Not really taking in the information and digesting what we are reading so then we can apply it to our lives. And I feel like this is where we end up being hearers of the word instead of doers of the word because we're just looking at it. We're not diving deep into what it is that the Lord is actually saying. So we're going to do that today. But of course, first, we're going to dedicate this podcast to Jesus. I hope you are doing well today, y'all. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for another podcast. I thank you for another day. Father, I thank you for the listeners on this podcast. I just ask that you give them an extra special blessing. Give them ears to hear, ears to receive. I ask that you anoint my lips of clay to speak, Father, that whatever it is that you desire me to say, that you just speak through me, use me to your glory in this podcast. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayerfully, you'll be able to take notes. If not, that's okay. Just go ahead and rewind, sis. I got you. The title of this It's called God's first blessing to us. God's first blessing to us. It's coming from Genesis chapter one, verse 28. And I'll just go ahead and read it. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. So there are three or four parts, rather, that I want to focus on, and that is when God blessed them and said. So God's blessing includes something that he said, right? He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. And it was not a suggestion. He said, be fruitful. Go ahead and do it. Go forth. Be fruitful. That word be, this is not in Hebrew. This is straight English. The word be, when you're being something, you are existing. Something is occurring. Something is taking place. So he's telling us to exist in fruitfulness. To take place in our fruitful nature, he created us with seed after our own kind. That's how we are able to have a sperm and an egg and create another human, right? Then he tells us to multiply. Then he tells us to replenish the earth and to subdue it. And we were given dominion. Amen. So first, I want to focus on be fruitful and multiply. Because this is more, even though I just mentioned having babies, this is more than just having a bunch of babies. How, you know, everyone, it seems like everyone in the church um, tends to relate this to. God did say be fruitful and multiply. This involves every area of our lives, okay? God bless them. God's blessing includes the provision. In the first chapter of Genesis, it's all about creation, right? And God created all of the provision first, and then he created man on the sixth day, and then the Lord rested. When he spoke a blessing and a command over us to be fruitful, it was not a suggestion. The Lord wouldn't tell us to do something that we are not equipped for. He gave us what we need first, and then told us to be fruitful, increase, prosper, with what I supplied you with, with what is in your hands and what is at your disposal. When God created man, first he made sure that the man had night and day. He made sure that there was water. He made sure that there was dry land. Come on. He made sure that there was animals to have dominion over, creeping things, things in the sea, things in the air. He made sure to separate the heavens, you know, 
He did all of these things. And then he placed us in the garden. And then he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. So it's important that as we walk and as we are obedient to what the Lord is calling us to, that we are meant to be fruitful. We are not to just sit there on the church benches, clapping our hands, doing the little two-step praise that we see most people do, and shouting and hollering and laying out on the floor only to be stagnant and dry and unfruitful in our real life. God commanded us to be fruitful. We have things at our disposal. We have things in our hands that he has given us, ideas that he has given us to go forth because these things are not only for us. There's businesses that we have on the inside. The Bible calls it treasure in earthen vessels that he has put on the inside of us that we need to birth out. And I don't know if y'all know anything about birthing. (laughs) Mothers, you already know. When those contractions start to hit, when that pressure comes, it's time to push. So even as you press forward in the things of God and you are truly committing yourself and your time to the Lord sincerely now, you will start to feel pressure on this walk. You'll start to feel the contractions on this journey because guess what, honey? It's time for you to push out and birth what God is calling you to. You're not going through dry seasons for no reason. You're not going through hell and high water for no reason. Because guess what? Jeremiah 29, 11, he has a plan for you. It is a good plan, not of evil, but plans to prosper you and give you an expected end. And we know that anything that God has is good because every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the father of lights. Amen. So being fruitful, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. Then he commands us to multiply. And that Hebrew word for multiply is rabba, means to bring in abundance, to be or become much, many, or great. So with the fruit that we produced, we multiply it. And I heard a sermon the other day on Instagram, y'all, about how God is not a God of addition. He is a God of multiplication. And the the way it was broken down was so good. I don't even know where the sermon was from. It was just a girl, you know, acting it out. But basically, two plus two is four. Two times two is four. They both look the same when they start out. But then two plus three is five. And two times three is six. So with God, you're always going to get a little bit more because he is a God of multiplication. And we're over here thinking, why aren't these things adding up? Something don't add up because God's not adding. He's multiplying. You're behind, honey, because six is greater than five, right? Two plus three is five. Two times three is six. Y'all, I was about to be on the floor when my husband sent that to me. I said, that is so good. (laughs) And it made a lot of sense because we're over here trying to do things, adding us trying to add to ourselves. That is an implication of us doing things in our own strength. Meanwhile, God is trying to multiply and do it in his strength. So we don't even have to be stressing like how we're stressing, y'all. And it makes the fruit that we produced make more fruit faster. Because God is also a God of speed. Things move very fast in the spiritual realm. We have to be able to run with the Lord. And one thing that I think is absolutely bomb that the Lord did was make every plant seed bearing after its own kind. So when you have one apple tree, say you got 10 apples on that tree and each apple has four seeds. That's a potential 40 apple trees because you got 10 apples. Each apple got four seeds. 10 times four, that's 40, right? That's the type of compound growth, exponential growth, multiplication That our God does. And that's the type of time that the kingdom of heaven is on. Okay. Say you have one gift or one talent. We have many. But let's just focus on one. We use this one gift or talent that we have to God's glory. And then someone else comes along. And they either want to learn it. Or they want to further their gift and perfect it like you have. And then their gift and talent is connected to other people. Who aspire to do what they do. So now they're bringing in more people to you and saying, hey, she can teach you how she taught me or he can teach you how he taught me. Right. 
So now where you were just perfecting your gift, trying to get right with the Lord, you added on two people who added on three people who added on more and more. Now you got a studio full of women (laughs) sharpening their gifts or a studio full of men or whatever the, you know, place is. They're sharpening their gifts and getting filled and they're walking in their purpose in the Lord. That's multiplication because whoever they're connected to and need to glean from whatever they got, they're going to get that. And guess what? It all started with you because of your obedience to the Lord, because you're going forth. And after you increased, after you were fruitful, you multiplied, you allow God to do the multiplication. When God said, open up this business, when God said, go get that building, when God said, go buy that house, when God said to move to this location, that was a part of your multiplication, your obedience to God. And if you just want to say, well, I got mine, you just want to sit there with your stuff. I got mine and I'm successful and this is all I need right here. It's not about you, boo boo. It's not. There are lives connected to your life. And you are responsible. Did you know that you're responsible of other people's lives that you don't even know? There's a prophet on my Facebook page. I think it was about two or three years ago. I saw a post. He said he heard the spirit of God say an unfulfilled destiny is a crime against humanity. Because it is not only you that's being affected. Oh, I just choose not to do this. Who am I to even do this in the first place? I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my breath. It's my body. It's my time. It's my money. When really, it's God's breath. It's God's body. It's God's time because he created it. It's God's money because he allowed you to get it and created it. And because we become out of alignment, other people are not getting blessed how they're supposed to. They're not reaping the benefits and reaping the testimony and reaping the breakthrough that they need from the fruit that you bore or was bearing because you're not multiplying. And that's a problem. But we're getting it right in the Lord. That's why we're keeping it real over here. There are so many things that I had to go back and look like, wow, God, I missed it here. I missed it there. I missed it there for years. And now finally, I'm getting back on track and I'm trusting God to restore to me the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm and the locust have eaten. I need God to restore me and help me to redeem the time because these days are evil and these people need Jesus. Amen. Jesus is coming back soon. So when he commanded us to be fruitful and multiply, it wasn't for us to keep it to ourselves and boast about how much we got. It was for us to give. It is more of a blessing to give than to receive. Amen. This was supposed to be a light word, (laughs) but it ends up being a word of correction anyway. But it is okay because it's also a very encouraging word that God has given us things for us to go out and work on. Because guess what? He has a purpose for us being alive. So many people are walking around today. What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing with my life? What am I here for? What was I made for? So many questions. And guess what? Jesus has all of the answers. And sometimes we know the answer, but we just need some type of confirmation. And that's where sisters like me come in to encourage you and to give you wise counsel and point you back to the one who created you because he'll be the one to tell you best what your purpose is. And lately, I've just been feeling my purpose start to flourish and bubble up in my belly, especially since becoming a wife and a mother. I'm starting to see the things that I saw back then right now. And it's just so wonderful, y'all, because not only did I ask the Lord, but I also connected myself to wise counsel. I connected myself to the true vine, Christ Jesus. So if any of you all need wise counsel, I know some people, (laughs) I know some women of God and I myself also, we will pray for you and we will help direct you and we will try to answer questions, you know, through the unction of the Holy Ghost. But just know we're always going to point you back to Jesus. You're not going to find all the answers sitting here talking to us. You got to go to God yourself, but it helps you grow to have a community, right? So when you start walking in your purpose, God will multiply it as you are obedient and other people will begin to walk in their purpose because the Lord has need of each and every one of us. 
the Lord doesn't tell us to do something that he hasn't done himself. And we can see this pattern all throughout creation. And since we are his creation, fearfully and wonderfully made, our purpose is more than just birthing children, but birthing answers to communities and to nations, which also involves the Abrahamic blessings found in Genesis 12, saying that he will make us a great nation and then through us, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed because of what we carry on the inside that he has given us. God is just so good. So now let's look at the word replenish. This is the third command within the blessings in Genesis chapter one, verse 28. That word replenish is the Hebrew word male, male, and it means to be full and to fill, also accomplish and fulfill. And y'all, this is the part that put me on the ground. <laughs> I was on the floor, not physically, but I was like, God, wow. And that's what happens whenever you start to dig into the word, you understand the meaning behind it because you're like, okay, replenish, okay, be fruitful, okay, multiply. You just be taking it in like that. But once you start to dig in, y'all, I'm telling you, the amount of beautiful revelation and then connections you get for like real life connections that you get when you dig into the word of God, this is what builds your faith. This is what digs your roots deeper into God. Amen. And then you also have something to draw from whenever you are going through what feels like a dry season. But back on track, the word replenish, Hebrew word male, meaning to be full, to fill, accomplish, and fulfill. So he commands us to increase. Then he commands us to multiply and to bring it in abundance. And then he commands us to fulfill and accomplish the vision. Now, isn't that beautiful? All we need, he will supply. So don't get intimidated by the word command. He's got you, okay? He commanded us to increase. He commanded it to multiply. And then he commanded it to fulfill and accomplish whatever it's supposed to. The word replenish in English means to fill something up again and restore to a former level or condition. That means, y'all, that the conditions that we are living in right now are not up to God's standards. He wouldn't say fill up the earth again if there was not a void somewhere, if there was an emptiness somewhere. Our purpose in this life is to fill an area that is empty. That's why we hear all the time that God made us unique. There is no one else with our fingerprints even. God has a position that only you, only I, only we can fulfill. You by yourself individually I for myself individually, and then us together as the body of Christ. So what is the earth void of or missing a feeling of right now? Right now in this moment, fear and reverence for the Lord, his glory. We are meant to be his glory carriers and his ambassadors. Right now, the earth is void and missing his truth because people don't want to listen to sound doctrine anymore. And they rather believe a lie, live in a fantasy world, or just ignore what's right in front of them so they can continue to live how they want to live. No one wants to be convicted. So even the Lord's truth is void and missing in this earth. They want to cancel it. They want to silence it, right? Look at your neighborhood. Look at your school. Look at your workplace. Look at your family. What is missing that God wants you to fulfill in these areas? What is the standard that needs to be met? One prayer I often pray for my husband and I is for the Lord to fit us like a puzzle piece in the areas that he wants us to fill in this city. Mind you, there is an equipping that comes with that. But it's a prayer I look forward to being fulfilled because I know that we are not in this neighborhood and city for no reason. We're not just living it up here in Florida. Okay, we have a purpose. We all have a purpose. The last command when the Lord blessed us is to subdue the earth. We are replenishing it, which means we're filling up the void and we are also subduing it. This is bringing things under subjection and under our authority. So with that being said, this shows that one, God gave us authority. So we walk in it. It's as simple as believing the sun will rise the next day. As simple as believing that when you inhale, you'll have oxygen and you'll be able to breathe. Believe that you have God's authority and use it under the authority of Christ. Okay. 
And two, there are things out there as we become more fruitful and increase and begin to restore that will attempt to stop the work. Just like how when you are growing any type of plant, fruit in particular, how all the bugs start coming out. The bugs, they were probably there in the grass, but they don't really show themselves until the fruit appears. Some demons, some people, they will not begin to show themselves until the fruit begins to appear. Now they're trying to reap where they haven't sown. Now they're trying to mess up the fruit, throwing discord, um, telling lies, trying to assassinate your character and make you look bad to try to turn people away from whatever God called you to, right? They're there to stop the work. But guess what? God said, subdue it. Put it under subjection. Something that Eve so conveniently forgot. (laughs) But it's all good because we gained our dominion and authority back through Christ Jesus. Amen. He restored us, right? We use the pest control. We use the fire of God. We use the sword of the spirit, right? We use our anointing oil. We subdue it. We use our voice boldly. Because the righteous are as bold as a lion, we go forth boldly and use our authority. Because guess what? If God be for us, who can be against us? So why not use our authority? If God said to do this thing and they're messing it up. The prince of this world does not want light. He wants darkness. And darkness and light have no fellowship together. And guess what that causes? Problems. There might be delays, setbacks, cancellations, but we keep pressing forward because why? The Lord gave us a command. It wasn't a suggestion. He knows the power he has and he knows what he gave us. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is living on the inside of us. So we hold resurrection power. Those who are dead right now spiritually We hold the power on the inside to go out in our purpose and say dry bones live and they will live. Because guess what? Rivers of living water flow from us because that power is on the inside of us. So then those who are dry spiritually can also be refreshed. Amen. God gave us a command. It wasn't a suggestion. He knows the power. He knows what he gave us, which is that same power. So the enemy may throw a little temper tantrum, but greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. First John four, four, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have the authority to condemn. And this is our heritage and our righteousness comes from the Lord. That's Isaiah 54, 17. Notice how it didn't say the weapon won't form. It said the weapon formed won't prosper. So there will be trials. People will try you. The bank may block your funding. The landlord may say, never mind. I don't believe that you're going to use this building for the right purpose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But there was greater on the other side of that. Do not fold under the hardships, but stick to the plan of the Lord. If one thing didn't work out, okay, that wasn't God's plan. Let's do this next thing. Amen. Don't think it's a cakewalk. Expect to go through some stuff to be prepared. Y'all, I was in the book of Nehemiah. And every time I see his name, just like, I guess you could say in the spirit, because you kind of like, my eyes are open. (laughs) But I see his name and I see the word builder. He was such a builder. And Ezra, it tells from his point of view, He says that the work stopped for a season, but I have to go back into Ezra and look at it. But Nehemiah had the people working with the tool in one hand and their weapon in the other hand as they went to work on rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. They had people intimidating them with their words. But Nehemiah went to the Lord about these enemies and every plan they had to stifle God's work didn't prosper. As they pressed on and rebuilding the wall, the attacks came and it didn't happen until they started the work and increase as their enemies started to see the results. And not only that, as I went back, because I just kept on hearing Nehemiah, so I went back into Nehemiah, okay? I realized that Nehemiah was chilling in the king's castle as a cupbearer and some people came from Jerusalem and he said, so how are things over there? 
and they told him that it was terrible. And so he was very sad that, you know, the place where God put his name, the place where his ancestors are from, where he's from was in shambles. And the king took note of it. Nehemiah prayed. The king said, hey, you look sad and you're not sick. What's going on? And he let him know my people are going through it over there. And the king was like, how can we help? And even before Nehemiah answered, he was praying to God on the inside and asked the king what he needed to help rebuild the walls so his people can be straight. And then the king granted him the permission. He asked for letters so he could, you know, get the supplies and he can pass through. He gave them everything that he needed. But the main point of that is Nehemiah was in a position to be able to ask for all of these things and come with the answer. Everyone over in Jerusalem, they were chilling. They probably didn't know where to get stuff from. They didn't know they're up from their down, it seemed like. No one said, hey, let's rebuild the wall. They're all just living with everything in shambles and things on fire, which is the situation that is going on today. There are people sitting out here, destitute, looking like they have no way out, not sure what to do, don't know they're up from their down. And we are sitting here knowing Christ Jesus, crying out to God, hearing his voice. And they are waiting for somebody like us to come with the answer. There's a part, I forget which chapter in the book of Nehemiah, that says, When he revealed what the plan was, because he kept everything a secret until, you know, God allowed him to release it. He said, God told me to come and help build up this wall back. And they said, yeah, let's do it. The people were ready to work. There were some people who lived right in front of the wall, it seemed like, because it said the wall in front of their house. They built up, they rebuilt that parts of the wall. Even daughters went forth and started to rebuild parts of the wall. It wasn't them saying, oh, they can do it. Oh, they can do it. The people who had it in them to work and go to work, they went to work. And God made sure that this work was done. And Nehemiah came back maybe once or twice to put things back in order. And that's what we are called to do, to be restorers of the breach, to be the rebuilders of the walls, because the walls in this earth, they are being torn down. The walls of righteousness, the walls of holiness. No one knows what gender they are anymore. Nobody knows that evil is evil and right is right. They're calling evil good and good evil, just like it's written in the Bible what happened in the last days. So it is very important that as we replenish, we also subdue. As we go forth in our purpose and start to fill up what has been empty for years and years, That we also take our stand as believers in almighty God and push every demonic influence down because they are going to come and try us. But God said, subdue, take authority. We don't have to wait to hear God's voice because he already commanded us. Don't think you have to sit in your prayer closet for hours when God already said, subdue. There are some areas in the book of Nehemiah where it says that he prayed and then he started to set things in order. Mind you, I believe God gave him the unction, but it never said that God said to do any of what he did, which was a working tool in one hand, a weapon in the other hand, some people at watch at a certain time, and then they switch at another time. I believe that God influenced him to do that, but it never said God commanded you and said it didn't say that. So some people are waiting for God's audible voice to tell them something when really he's already dropped the wisdom on what you need to do. So what can we learn from Nehemiah? Be concerned about what God is concerned about. Nehemiah was concerned about Jerusalem. He was concerned about God's city and God's people. And with that concern, he prayed. He cried out to God. So that's what we need to do. Cry out to God. Jesus even said that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his fields. Glory be to God. 
That's not written in my notes. That just dropped in my spirit right now. Cry out to God for the laborers because we don't want everything on one person, right? You don't want everything to be on you as you go forth to increase, multiply, subdue, replenish, right? The laborers need to be at work in God's fields. And the fact that he says to pray the Lord of the harvest, that he sends more laborers. He is the Lord of the harvest. We can say, hey, we need more people. We need some help. And he'll go out and start to drop ideas in people's hearts. And then he will push them forward to do what? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. So now there are more laborers in the field. Glory be to God. So pray, pray and align with God and his will. Don't answer the attacks in your flesh. This is what we can learn from Nehemiah because they were trying to get him to come down off the wall. They said, come meet me in this city over here. And he was like, I'm doing a good work up on this wall. So why would I come down and go meet you over there? I'm busy. (laughs) And that's the type of stance, a part of subduing that we need to do. I'm busy doing the Lord's work. I cannot be distracted right now right? Stay with your weapon. Stay with the sword of the spirit. Know your Bible. Know what verses to pull out. Because the sword of the spirit is the word of God, right? Also, sometimes it's a matter of praise. Praise is a weapon. It's a matter of worship sometimes. Worship and glorifying God is a weapon. I love, I think it's in the book of Kings, that the worshipers went forth first. They were going to battle and the worshipers went forth first. And the praises disconfided the enemy. The praises confused the enemy and the enemy started to attack their own self and kill their own selves, basically. That's the type of God we serve. Glory be to God that we don't even have to do anything. It was either Elisha or Elijah. Elisha? Because some people say Elisha or Elisha, whatever. One of them major prophets back in the day. He asked the Lord to open up the eyes of his servant and he saw chariots of fire surrounding them. There was more for them than them who were against them. So when we go forth and subdue, first of all, when they're coming up against us as we're doing God's work, it's not really us they're coming up against. It's the Lord they're coming up against. And anything that is the Lord's work will continue. Amen. And also, there's nothing to fear when we know that there are more fighting with us and for us than against us. Because guess what? We're not fighting in our own flesh. We're not fighting our own battle. The battle is the Lord's. We're just being obedient because he is the Lord God of hosts. And he needs a vessel to move through. Because he told us to have dominion. So he has to move through us. That's why demons need a body so bad. They can't do anything without permission and without using a body, right? They need an open door. And God wants us to be his open door. To bring forth his purpose, his will in this earth. Glory be to God. Mind you, it might not be physical attacks like ridicule. It could be mental attacks that come up against us. Who cares about this? This isn't the work of God. You're not good enough to do this. That is a part of the battle, the mental battle. Because if the enemy knows that you're spewing out the word and that nothing can stop you from doing the work, words will start to come and be planted. You just start to hear thoughts out of nowhere. And what do you do? Cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And you bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ so that everything that is not of God is cast down and has got to go. And guess what? In the book of Nehemiah, the same thing happened. The people started to not really murmur and complain, but they started to get discouraged in the work. And they started to get fearful because of the threats of the enemy. The enemy was planting those seeds that, okay, if you're not going to stop the work because we're threatening you like this, we're going to go the back way and, you know, we're going to plant these seeds of fear. We're not going to just come up against you with our swords and war cry, but we're just going to speak and plant a seed and that seed is going to grow into fear. So then you'll feel like you have to stop the work because you're so full of fear. Fear is an enemy tactic to cripple you and stop the work. 
It's a nasty, nasty spirit. And that is the reason why so many people have not gone forth in their purpose because of fear and those mental battles. Who cares about this? This isn't of God. Are you sure God told you to do that? If you heard a command, notice how God commands something and the enemy will always come back and question it. He did it in the Garden of Eden. Didn't God say you can't eat any fruit from any of these trees? And he knows that's not what God said. But it was an open door. She should have told that serpent to shut his face. She should have subdued, right? But thank God for the experience that she had because guess what? Now we can walk in our authority and we know to shut those questions down. Shut everything that questions God down. We stand on what we know. And if you have a question on whether you're good enough for this, is this of God? Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God cares about the work we're doing because there is a purpose for it. Would he tell you to do something that doesn't glorify him? And he prepared us in advance to do this good work, just like how he prepared uh, everything for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the sky, the moon, the light, the dark, the types of trees, the types of um, fruit bearing trees, all the animals. He prepared them in advance. If God called you to something, yes, you are qualified to do it because it's not about us. It's about him. We're already his handiwork, fearfully and wonderfully made. When we were in our mother's womb, he was forming us and molding us. He knew us before we were even a thought in our mother's brain. Before we were even formed, he knew us. We are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And he already had a work for us to do before we even got here because he knew That in 2024, there are some people that need to know Jesus. There are some women that need to be encouraged through my testimonies that have them listening to this podcast right now to get a right now word and for their bellies to be filled with the word of God and to be encouraged to, yes, go forth in your purpose. Yes, go do what God told you to do. Yes, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, take authority and subdue the area that God has called you to. That part about Nehemiah, them beckoning him to come off the wall, that's another tactic, a distraction. Oh, come on, take a break. You don't have to work so hard. It doesn't take all that. Let's go do this instead. Those are subtle distractions. But Nehemiah said in chapter 6, verse 3, I sent messengers to them. He didn't even go down and tell them himself. He sent messengers saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? Stand firm in your assignment. Do not compromise. And y'all, it's hard because it be some real slick stuff that the enemy be pulling. It is so hard. There was one time my mom came over unannounced and wanted me to go outside with her, but I was in the middle of recording and editing one of these videos, one of these podcasts. So she played with my daughter for a little while. And after I was done recording, I still had to edit it. And she was like, you're not done yet. I'm hungry. We need to go. Low key throwing a tantrum, right? But I wasn't moved. I told her, you came here unannounced and I was in the middle of something. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wait. My assignment came first. Mind you, it didn't happen that way because time was ticking. It was going to take a long time to edit. So I was like, all right, let's just go. So it turned from... We're only going to one place till we're going to several places. She wanted to have my baby for the day, but now I'm taking along for the ride. We were at Walmart. We were at Target. We had to pick up my sister from work. We went to the meat shop. And I'm pretty sure that I was trying to upload it, like upload the podcast at some point. But I think my laptop had died or something like that. I think I talked about this before. And I tried my best to continue to work, but it was hard. I should have stood flat footed and firm on my assignment like, hey, no, this needs to be uploaded first. If you need to go, you can go. (laughs) That's what it should have been. But not, you know, being rude or anything like that, y'all. But that's just how the enemy likes to play. He will use people close to you to do things like this. And you think you're doing a good thing because, you know, you're taking time out for your family. God's about family, stuff like that. But you have to be mindful 
of the battle that we are fighting in the spirit. Okay? So don't come down from your assignment. And I noticed also for about three to four weeks, she'd be off on my day off, which was a Tuesday, which was also when I was recording and uploading the podcast. And sometimes it'd be my sister calling me while I'm trying to do the podcast or calling me while I'm trying to complete something. And now I can't complete it because that time that God gave me to complete it, I'm on the phone with you instead of doing what I'm supposed to be doing for the Lord. So guess what my response is now? He called me to do a great work. I cannot come down from it because time is of the essence. The Lord instructs us to subdue and take authority. And it also looks like boundaries. Using the word of God, knowing his word and standing on his promises. So now the question is, with all that was said in these past 40 minutes or so, how do we become fruitful and multiply and replenish? Because we just covered subdue, boundaries, right? Take authority, use the sword. So how do we become fruitful, multiply and replenish? One, make the secret place a priority. Prayer is a direct communication with God and his direct communication with you. He will give you the instructions in the secret place on what he wants you to do. Amen. So you go before God. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you to pray. Ask him to open up your ears, your spiritual ears to give you discernment. Ask him straight up, what is the will of the Lord for my life? What is my assignment for this season? Go in with your um, journal. My mentor taught me the two pen method. Write your question in one color. Write what you hear slash God's answer in another color. And it's not going to be like you sit down and it's a five minute conversation. No, I find that I hear God more when I'm worshiping him. When I'm just straight up glorifying the king. That's when I tend to hear him more because I'm literally close to him and at his feet, focused on him. And when I'm focused on him, just like when you're talking to someone in the natural, you'll be able to hear actively when you're looking at them straight in the eyes and attentive to their body language and what they are doing. When you're worshiping Jesus, you are attentive to him. You're paying attention. You're making sure that your mind is focused on him. So that you'll be able to hear whatever he is saying. Because the moment you start to, you know, go off in your own mind and start thinking other thoughts. And, oh, what I'm going to do tomorrow and this and that. And, oh, what bill is due next? You stop listening. You're now in your own head. And then the person is asking you a question. And you're like, what? Sorry, I didn't hear that. It's the same thing. Sitting there in front of the father. You have to be actively listening to him. Not off in your own la-la land of to-do lists, but actively listening to him. So then you can get the instructions and the answers that you are looking for. Number two, on how to be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Be well-versed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because as we know the word of God, we'll know Jesus who is the embodiment of the word of God. He is the reality yet to come. That's Colossians chapter 2 verse 17. And in Christ himself lies all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. Meaning you'll know your purpose when you know Jesus. You'll know how to become fruitful, how to multiply and how to replenish the earth when you get to know the son of the living God. And as you get to know him, you'll become more like him. Just like that friend you hang around and you pick up on their mannerisms. Or if you're married, you start picking up some um, slang or words that your husband used or things that your wife does. You start to pick up on it, right? And it's even greater with the Lord. The more you pick up on something, the more you pick up on what he does. He will transform your whole character and your whole life by spending that time with him. So getting well-versed in the word, getting well-versed in Jesus, knowing who he is, what he's about, his character, his mannerisms, how he handled the Pharisees and religious people, how he handled his enemies, his heart. You get to see all of that in the Gospels. I recommend starting in John and then Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
because those ones, they like break things down a little bit more. But there's just something about the book of John where it's all red <laughs> for my Bible. It's like nothing but red. Like when it's Jesus talking, it's red letters. So you'll know that it's him talking. And I just want to mention Psalm chapter 17, verse 15, that says, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Just awaking in his likeness. You're just going about spending time with him, having a good time with the Lord. And then you realize how much you are like him, how much you've transformed from who you used to be to who you are now. Also, the word of God is the seeds that we go out to plant. So even moving by the Holy Ghost, we'll be able to water those seeds that are already planted. The Apostle Paul wrote that one plants, one waters, and God creates the increase. Amen. But it's our job to go out and work in the field to plant and to water. And all of that starts with spending time with the Lord being quiet at his feet and listening for his heart's desires. That's where our purpose lies. That's how you become fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And then, of course, he gives the authority and the power to subdue because he says in Luke ten nineteen, behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy so that nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we are already equipped to do these things. But we have to align ourselves in God's purpose. Amen. So that is this blessed word for this podcast, y'all. Was it fun for y'all? Because it was fun for me. I had a good time. Because in the midst of this, even looking at my notes, the Lord was dropping gems. And I'm sitting here just in awe. Like, God, you are so good. So keep it real with me in the comments. And let me know what do you think of this word. What type of fruit and multiplication have you seen in this earth? Are you still looking for your purpose? Let me know in the comments so I know how to pray for you or celebrate you in Jesus name. Shameless plug here. I have a business selling wig caps and natural hair products. Adorned31beauty.com. Again, it is Adorned31beauty.com. I will put the link below for YouTube. I think I can put it in the comments for Spotify. I'll see about that. But that money goes towards, of course, running the business and then being able to do more things ministry wise, minister to women and all that good stuff there. You can also connect with me personally on the Instagram page, realtalktuesday.podcast, realtalktuesday.podcast. You can send me a DM asking for prayer, asking for encouragement. You know, I got you in the Lord. We are in this thing together. Make sure you share this podcast with somebody who needs it as well. Sharing is free, okay? And the Lord will bless you for it, I'm sure. It is more blessed to give than to receive, amen? (laughs) So share this word with somebody. Tag a friend if you can. I appreciate you for listening. Thanks again, and I will definitely catch you in the next one.